Hi, I'm Rex Harris from Piccadilly Park, Bangalore, on the far north coast of New South Wales. We have 60 hectares of macadamias, and when we purchased the property back in uh, about 20 years ago, it was used for cattle grazing and breeding. And later on, we discovered that back in the 80s, the property was used to grow corn and potatoes, so the, the land was ploughed. The property has probably been severely degraded of topsoil over that period, and we're noticing that, and we're trying to get it back to a healthy and a good soil. One of the reasons why we're doing cover cropping and uh, compost and trying to increase our soil carbon is because we're a non-irrigated property. So the more moisture we can store in the soil, the better. For every 1% of soil carbon that we sequester into our soil, the soil can hold an additional 140,000 litres of water per hectare. And uh, the practices that we've been using after the last few years we have increased our soil carbon by about two and a half percent. So it's um, about uh, 300 odd thousand litres per hectare of moisture that we can hold in our soil. We might have a, a, a dry spell and we've still got the moisture to get us through and we might fluke another shower and recharge the soil with moisture. So it's an incredible backstop. It's a great bank account to have. We've increased the soil carbon in a few different ways. We started um, making our own compost and using that within the farm. And over that period, we've seen a, an incredible turnaround in soil health. So a lot of the trees were dying from the top down. There was a lot of dieback throughout our orchard. And now the trees are looking exceptionally healthy. Another thing that we're doing on the farm is we, we were noticing as the trees got larger, started to canopy over, we were losing ground cover. And once we lost our ground cover, we were losing our precious topsoil. So we've commenced a program, it's about a seven year program, and we're removing every second row, approximately a thousand trees per annum. And within that enlarged inter row, we're now planting cover crops to really build the soil health in a very quick manner and increase our organic soil carbon. Our aim, even though we're removing half of our orchard, the remaining trees will produce more than the compromised trees. So they'll be a lot healthier, they'll have a lot more sunlight and a lot more production. Now that we're removing every second row, we're noticing that the remaining trees are starting to leaf up in that dead zone and we can already see an increased production within the tree, not just on the perimeter of the tree. There's a lot more light getting inside the tree and there's a lot more production starting to happen. Once we started removing the trees in every second row, we had a lot of craters and bare dirt and it was a worry that a lot of that would be washed away if we had a severe rain event. So we were thinking what would we grow there and it was at that time that we were starting to look into cover crops. So basically our farm has been a monoculture. And it gave us a good opportunity to change the farm from a monoculture to a diverse farm of lots of different plants. So when we started growing cover crops, we're looking at growing a cocktail of crops within the tree row. And those cover crops are going to help improve our soil by photosynthesis, exudating sugars into the soil, increasing microbes within, in getting the soil alive, sequestering carbon, increasing worm population, fixing compaction, a big problem that we do have. Some of the plants that we're using are great for busting through compaction. And there's a lot of benefits. We're noticing an incredible amount of insects now. That we're, A lot of beneficial insects are coming back into our orchard. Um, with bee population is incredible. Spiders are coming back into the cover crop areas. So there's a win-win in both ways. It may well be in 10 or 20 years time, those cover areas where we've been growing a consistent cover crop, we may, may well replant back into macadamias or something else, and then remove the adjoining trees and start all over again. We have two new items on the farm for cover cropping. And the first one is a roller crimper, which instead of, it rolls the cover crop down and flattens it, 
It doesn't cut the stalk, it just puts a crimp in and it makes it limp so it doesn't stand back up again. And that gives us an incredible mulch bed to plant or biomass on the soil surface to plant the next crop into. And then that is breaking down by the soil microbes and improving the soil layer after layer after layer. And then using a no-till planter, we're planting through that biomass with the next following crop, which could be uh, uh, the first summer crop. The plants that we're using have really deep roots, so we're hoping to penetrate through compaction areas, bring up nutrients, and then when we're rolling that, that plant back into the ground, we're not taking anything away, we're just growing to improve the soil. We're laying it down and planting another one right through it, the next crop, and we're doing layer upon layer to build a healthy soil. The species that we're growing, basically a winter and a summer. The winter crop, we probably planted a little bit too late last year, but we used tillage radish and the tuber on the radish can get to about uh, two to 300 mil deep and then a long taproot down to two and a half to three metres. And that's an incredible plant to bust open compaction on farm. And then with that, we've grown hairy vetch, um, rye, Facilia, which is a pollinator plant to attract insects, uh, chicory, uh, lots of different clovers, crimson clover, red clover. Well, it looks like we've got the ability to grow two summer crops in the season that we have. So with that summer crop, it might be sunflowers, millet, sorghum, cowpea, mung beans, flaxseed, chicory, tall fescue, plantain. There's a whole cocktail of plants that we're using. We have planted some cover crops under the drip line of the tree, which in normal macadamia practices is left bare. Basically, it's easier to pick up the nuts off bare soil. But on our farm, we've always had a cover there. We've used a South African species named sweet smother grass, and we have special harvesters that can pick nuts up out of that grass. This year, we've grown a legume under the um, drip line of the tree where we would normally have smother grass. So by using a plant, we're fixing nitrogen. We don't have to buy synthetic fertilizer. We're using a plant to provide us with the nitrogen that the trees require. And there are a lot of benefits come with that. Sequestration of carbon, the increase of soil biology. The soil that we have here was very little biology. So basically the soil is geology. So we're trying to get the soil as a living soil and alive. So we're using a lot of new inputs to assist us. We're using Serenade Prime as a soil drench. Biologics are really important in our farming operation. And the biology is the key to the whole thing. It's difficult to quantify the rate of return on composting and cover cropping, except that we can see each year that we've been doing composting, our kernel recovery has increased and our reject uh, quantity has decreased. So we're getting a higher income from a better quality product, a healthy product, a clean green product. Hi, I'm Tim A. Grady, Business Development Manager, Bayer. I'm very lucky in my role to work with innovators like Rex Harris on improving their soil health. Bayer for the last decade have worked with leading growers like Rex and industry experts in areas of compost, cover crops and reduced tillage to try and encourage more regenerative farming systems that really focus on building soil carbon. Our biologics play a key role in fitting with this holistic farming system. Mm -hmm.